Hey, what's up guys? Jay's Two Cents here, and I'm going to bring you another one of these bonus videos here that's kind of on the outside of my normal upload schedule, uh, because a lot of you seem very interested in my Adobe Premiere Pro workflow, which is very basic but yet very efficient, and a lot of you are aspiring content creators, and I figured this might help some people. Now today's video is being brought to you by Videoblocks, which is a service that I have used for three years now, because I started using Videoblocks when I first started my channel back in 2012. Videoblocks is a website where you can download and use royalty-free different motion backgrounds, templates for After Effects for creating intros or logo reveals, which is something that a lot of aspiring content creators lack as a very good intro. So you could download one of these and tailor it towards your channel or your stream or whatever you want. Uh, stock footage, which is really good for kind of, you know, project creations if you're doing maybe little short films or feature films and you want to you need like aerial flybys and things they've got all sorts of stuff there but not only does video blocks have their templates here which they host they also have a marketplace here where professional content creators and graphics designers can create templates for people like you and me to use upload it to the marketplace and receive a hundred percent commission on their work so it's definitely worth taking a look at, not only as a content creator uh, for end users, but also for creating content for other people to use and make a little bit of money on your work. So if that sounds interesting to you, then head to Videoblocks by using the link in the description. Sign up for a free trial and start checking out some of these awesome templates today and take your project to the next level. So I figured because of the amount of messages and comments that I got on the last Premiere Pro video that I did, uh, I would kind of maybe do a mini series here, sort of like a noob teaching a noob. Now, even though I've been video editing now for many years, I'm not a graphics designer. I'm just a basic video editor. I've got my style, like it works, and I can get through my editing very quickly because I don't like editing. I like playing with the hardware. I like hooking it up. I like building PCs and overclocking and benchmarking. I don't like spending hours and hours and hours on video editing because that's not fun. And even though it's a necessary evil in order to get the video out to you guys, I just don't like spending my time on that. So I have found very efficient ways of getting through my workflow, and I figured I would share that with you guys today. Now there's a couple of things I think we need to do for Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud, which is what I'm using right here. Now, I'm using the 2014 version because I've heard about too many bugs with the 2015, so I'm using 2014. Uh, I figured we'd show you guys a couple of ways to get it set up so that one, you don't lose all your work, and two, uh, you can get through your work more quickly and have more fun gaming and building computers or whatever else it is that you are doing. Now the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to get our Premiere Pro set up to do auto saving much more frequently because by default it's set to 20 minutes. Now if you were to lose 20 minutes of work it wouldn't be a huge deal but damn it sometimes I have things set up exactly how I want them and I don't want to go backwards 20 minutes if something crashed and let's face it Adobe is prone to crashing. So you can go to file, uh, right to the back, go to edit, preferences and then just go to general. Now in general is where you can play with a lot of different stuff. For instance, you have your video transition default duration, and this is number of frames, or you can set it to seconds. Now one of the things that I've done here is I like much quicker transitions, so I've set that to six frames, audio transition duration is a second, still image default duration is five seconds, we'll set that to six, actually meant to do that. So now every time you pull a transition or a file into here, like an image, it's going to automatically use these parameters, which is going to save you a lot of time without having to constantly trim your transitions or your, you know, your still image on screen duration. You can set it here and then adjust it for the ones that are going to be outside of the norm. Uh, but anyway, appearance. Some of you like a dark screen. Some of you like a light screen. So you can use this right here to make it more pleasing on the eyes. If you're doing a lot of nighttime editing, darker would be better. Uh, you know, if you're in a dark office. Uh, but anyway, we're going to move down to auto save here, which is very important because we want to automatically save projects. This is a big deal. If you're not automatically saving and you get a power loss or you get a corrupt file or you accidentally hit something and delete your timeline like a certain somebody on Twitter, you know who you are, then you can actually come back and recover your data. I have mine set to every five minutes. By default, it's set to 20 minutes. So every five minutes, the worst case scenario I would lose is the last five minutes of work. It's also set to save a maximum of 20 versions of the project. So once it has saved five, or excuse me, once it has saved 20 versions of the project, it will then on project save number 21, it'll overwrite number one, 22 will overwrite number two, et cetera, et cetera. So you've always got a very 
several versions of the project that you can actually fall back on should you lose your data. Now memory is a thing where you can, now memory tab here you can use to kind of uh, allocate how much memory is available to Premiere Pro. Now because I've got 32 gigs of memory on the system and when I am doing rendering, uh, I am, and when I'm using Premiere, I'm not really doing other things on the system. So I've allocated all but six gigabytes of the system memory to Premiere Pro, which really helps during uh, quicker rendering and, and good playback. That way we don't get laggy playback, but you can actually customize this for different projects or, or programs in the Adobe Cloud as well. Uh, we've got sync settings here. That's, no, that's really gonna be all that important right now. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we are going to go ahead and uh, move into our workflow now that we've got that set up. So it has saved our project. If we open up our, um, whatchamacallit over here and we go to our Premiere folder, which is where I'm using, you see right up here, I'm using YouTube Premiere Tips and Tricks. If I go Tips and Tricks, there is our autosave right there. So there's the autosaves that we've just seen happening as we've been doing this tutorial. And this will continue to stack up to 20 files. And then if something crashes, you just go, if this doesn't work, or you accidentally mess up, then you can go back and open up one of these and continue with your work. It's a very good fallback plan. Now, one of the things with video editing that you'll find yourself doing quite often is transitions, trimming, uh, lengthening and shortening a clip, multiple video tracks, maybe multiple audio tracks, and it can get very cumbersome and tedious trying to sit here and you know constantly trim things and make sure that you know the transition duration is right where you want it and that can take forever now this audio or this transition right here uh, video transition is going to default to wherever we set it over here in the preferences if you remember so i have it set to six frames wherever you set that when you pull in a transition that's the default that it's going to be now navigating over here through the effects bin you can you can use a search like you know dip if you know if you want dip to white you can drag that over uh, so you want a crossfade, you can do, um, it'll bring up all the crossfade stuff. If you've got cross dissolve, it'll bring up cross dissolve, but that's tedious and that takes time. And over long periods of time, typing in all that stuff and trying to find it and drag and drop is going to take forever. So here's the way I do it. I do right over here in the effects bin down in the gray area. I do right click new custom bin and we can name that whatever we want. We'll call it J's lazy stuff. How's that? Because that's a pretty accurate description. Now I'm gonna drag all of the stuff that I know that I use down in there. So I use bass enhancement for the audio and I use treble enhancement as well because the lavalier mic lacks a little bit of treble. I like to use cross dissolve. So I'll drag cross dissolve down there. Uh, I also like to use exponential fade, which is for audio, bring that down there. I use constant gain as well. I drag that down there. Um, let's see, I use dip to white and black, so we'll drag both of those down there. So now instead of having to search through all of these files or folders and then type in stuff, I can just open up my project and know my Jay's Lazy stuff is going to have all of the stuff in there that I regularly use. So now I can, let's say I just dragged this B-roll piece over here and I trimmed it to the right size. I just dip to white. Bam. Let's say we are going to do... Uh, let's say we're gonna do an intro. We're gonna do my intro thingy over there. So we'll go over here, productivity, YouTube, design elements. We'll say intro short. We'll drag that over there and we'll do that. So maybe we'll do this. We'll just, this, this editing's not gonna make a whole lot of sense here because I'm just doing it for the sake of showing you functionality, okay. so. You know, the numbers really shouldn't be all that surprising considering this is the fourth 980 Ti that we've taken a look at. I find it kind of interesting. All right, so we can just say that's a little hook. We'll put that in the front. We've got a transition there. We'll snap that all together, drag all of this, bring it back to the left. So this is the way it looks now. You know, the numbers really shouldn't be all that surprising considering this is the fourth 980 Ti that we've taken a look at. I find it kind of... So I've got that red frame in there that I've got to figure out. That's been bugging me for a while. So I can drag that down, get rid of that red frame. And there we go. So maybe you don't want yeah. that to just pop in. Maybe you want a dip to white and a dip to white out. So you get this. Let's look at it. 
And I find it kind of interesting that they're all competing. There we go. Now speeding up and slowing down so you get that barnacles effect, we'll call it. Let's find something here that's maybe worth speeding up and slowing down. Versus the... And we'll cut this part. Brands and how they... Brands and how they survive. If you guys aren't buying the brand, they're not... If you guys aren't buying the brand, they're... So we'll cut it there. If you guys aren't buying... So we'll do this now. We will do a speed and duration. We'll put that 125. But we'll also now highlight this clip here because when you speed up the volume, it's kind of funny too to also push in a little bit on the person. So we will say... We will highlight this clip. We'll go up here to effects controls, click motion, and then you can drag the little edge tool here and like pull it in. I mean, look at that guy. Look at that guy right there. You, could, you have to take him serious, don't you? Okay, so we'll do it like that. And you get this. Because your dollars are ultimately what speaks in, you know, when it comes to brands and how they survive. If you guys aren't buying the brand, they're not gonna survive, obviously. It's funny how business works, isn't it? See, there's that. That's kind of how the speed up and slow down works. Nothing real crazy about it. Anyway, um, I hope this video has helped some people. It's just a quick, it was kind of a quick tips and tricks I wanted to put out there. This bin right here has saved me hours of time over the long run. Um, depending on how long it takes you to edit in your workflow, it takes me about an hour and a half now to edit a 15 minute video, uh, going through all of my outtakes and stuff and messing up and having to do re-speaks and sometimes re-record, that's the way I get through it. So I hope this has helped you guys. hope it uh, makes you guys a little bit faster at your editing. And if you guys are aspiring to be content creators, then keep at it. That's the best piece of advice I have. Don't give up and just do it because you enjoy doing it. Don't do it because you hope to get a huge, giant audience and free stuff because that's really not the way it it usually works out. So best of luck to you guys. And tell me, if you want me to keep this series alive, let me know what kinds of things you would like me to include. Uh, that way I know what kind of content to create. So I know what you guys are interested in when it comes to Premiere Pro. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you to VideoBlocks for sponsoring today's video. Remember, head over to the Video Blocks if you want to get some free templates that you can use. Um, I plan on doing a video also in the future where I take one of the template videos uh, or templates for like an intro and show you guys how you can use video blocks to make a very professional and awesome intro for your live streams or your videos or whatever so you guys can see exactly how to edit those files and turn them into something amazing. So hope you, this has helped once again. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the social sphere and if not, I will see you in the next video. Take care. And we're going to save this because that's just what you do whenever you walk away from a project. You save it.